you very much, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I thought of uh, giving you a brief introduction about my speciality, especially because uh, we have a limited exposure for dermatology during our medical student career, maximum two years. So it's a branch of internal medicine. Actually, it was a subspeciality in internal medicine years ago. Uh, now we have a separate stream, separate uh, college of study, uh, board of study, and uh, college of dermatology. But still, we remain a close associate of internal medicine. So if you know your medicine well, it's easy to get through the selection exam. We are a bit of a calm and quiet speciality, uh, but there are a few emergencies, and when they occur, they can be pretty dramatic. It is a visual speciality. So everything is on the skin. Anybody can see the lesion, the patient, the family, and the society. So you are supposed to uh, make a correct diagnosis quickly and deliver your results fast. Demand is high because how small is the reach and the quality of life can be severely affected. And the patient's expectations are always high. Our work is mostly outpatient basis. There are remote facilities in teaching hospitals and deep hospitals, but in peripheries, maybe base hospitals, we have to get help of our surgical and medical colleagues who share work facilities. And the management of dermatology has gone far beyond the BDMS zone and Nicolas zone, right? Uh, we are one of the specialties that deal with uh, numerous of issues quite a lot. They have changed the quality of life of the patient significantly. So it's quite uh, exciting. And uh, we will have now biologics and everything available in the government sector. And they also come with a number of side effects. So it can be challenging at times as well. And if you like a little bit of surgery, you can do that as well, because we do minor extensions on the head and neck area. Uh, as well as there are some other treatment modalities as well, such as laser, phototherapy, cryotherapy, and all, which are available in both government and private sector. And when it comes to the selection, actually, you select what you like the most. And most of you must be having uh, one or two options in your head, but uh, please consider some other facts as well, especially the chances of getting through the selection exam and the speciality that you are going to do, whether it suits your lifestyle, because one might like a speciality with 24 7 on call, while the others might like a speciality with weekends often where you can stay with your family. You have to also consider earning capacity as well as the opportunities in working abroad. There are certain specialities where the opportunities in working abroad is really high, especially in countries like Australia. I just want to highlight this fact again, because when it comes to dermatology, this is how the, the, the candidates been selected at uh, the part one selection exam over the years. If you can see that, it's almost always around number five. It is not because that the exam is very strict or the candidates are doing poorly, it's mainly because of the card provision available within the Ministry of Health at the moment. So it's wise to have a backup plan as well. If you want to do dermatology, study for medicine selection exam as well. They don't clash with each other. And studying medicine also helps because 50% of the MCQs in selection exam in dermatology are from general medicine. So if you miss out in dermatology, you have another option as well. Just a suggestion. And you can, I mean, website, you can download prospectus. I'm just going to rush through. And this is a structure of the part one exam. As I said earlier, there are 30 MCQs, 50% from general medicine. And even within the projected material, the slides, there are five out of 20 from general medicine, right? And these are the training centers we have at the moment. And the registrar period two and a half years. And within that two and a half years, there's one year you have to work as a medical registrar in a general medical ward doing uh, casualties and RP on course. And at the end of that one year, you have a, a you have an exam purely based on general medicine. So you can see how important general medicine is to dermatology. And after your MD exam, so you have one year local training as a senior registrar and the OCS training up to two years. Where in it, earlier, it was only attachments that we were offered in countries like UK, but now you can secure a day job during your uh, overseas training in most countries. So these are the requirements for board certification. 
every dermatology posted the OC's training, your portfolio and the research proposal. And once you get both certified, there are three paths ahead of you. Either you remain in the state sector or resign and join private sector or migrate. And as you can see, only few have migrated so far. Uh, mainly because there are many advantages, the job security, and you can see a lot of number of patients. With, you can improve your clinical skills, you can uh, perform minor surgeries, and uh, improve your knowledge as well. However, uh, there are some disadvantages as well, because now the card, the, the most demanding places are being filled, and you will be posted to peripheries. And uh, so you sometimes you might be the first dermatologist in certain base hospitals. So you have to start from the scratch, set up your own training, and build up your staff. But that's not uh, a big job. I mean, you don't really need sophisticated instruments to build up a dermatology clinic in a periphery. It's mainly on patient basis. And uh, the other disadvantage is we don't have such specialties in our country yet, but in other countries. There are pediatric dermatologists, dermatopathologists, and so on, but that might become a reality very soon. And uh, dermatology always goes with cosmetics, cosmetic dermatology. If you are remaining in a big center, yes, you can do practice that, but in a periphery, you may not be able to, but eventually you might come to a big center with annual transits and all. And this is the whole reason why there are only five people being selected in the part one exam. The part is being regularly filled. Uh, but the Ministry of Health, the PGIM, uh, Board of Study, and the college are working hard to identify new vacancies within the government sector for the upcoming trainings. And if you decided to join the private sector, you can earn some money and practice cosmetic dermatology because all these big private hospitals now have their own cosmetic dermatology centers with state-of-the-art facility equipments and you can remain closer to your family as well. But the number of patients that you see with variety may be less when comparing to government sector and there's always a competition from your colleagues, other specialists and from people such as beauticians and cosmetologists. And if you decide to migrate, and uh, now the situation is much favorable. Earlier, it was really difficult for us to get that job local consultant course in the UK, especially UK, uh, because we had to go through a MRCT pathway. Now, our MD dermatology degrees were recognized. You can, through the Royal College of Physicians, you can get GMC registration in the UK and get local consultancy post as well. So, I hope you will choose wisely. Thank you and good luck.